Are you a motion designer looking to stay on the cutting edge of the industry, or even just looking to ditch After Effects? That's where Cavalry comes in. But its workflow is different than After Effects. I mean, just look at this thing that literally has zero keyframes. Zero keyframes. How's that even possible, you ask? Let me show you how to get started using the power of procedural generation for motion design. First up, take everything you know about After Effects' linear workflow and throw it in the trash. In Cavalry, you can of course work linearly, but its real power comes from working dynamically and building systems. One animation connected to some color arrays, render it out five times with a dynamic index, and boom, instant variation. We've got color arrays, text arrays, animation controls, dynamic timelines, auto sizing compositions, tons of dynamic tools. But where do I start? You probably know what a lot of these are. You've got your select tool, edit shape tool, pen, pencil, line, text, square, circle, all the shapes you could possibly want. Alt click on any of the shapes to quickly spawn one in. Make sure to name it something good. All layers have attributes. In this top section are the standard attributes that pretty much everything has. Down here are the shape specific attributes. Clicked on a circle but wanted a square? Boom, it's a square. Want rounded corners? We got them. Want them chamfed? Go for it. Up here, we got our fill options, stroke options, trim paths, build right in, mask options, and all sorts of advanced goodies back here. But what good are attributes if they aren't connected? Cavalry has a procedural workflow, which means things affect other things. Duh. Click on this plus button to open up the quick add menu, search for oscillator, and hit enter. Pro tip, everything lives in here, so you can browse these tabs to see everything that Cavalry has to offer. We see that the oscillator's attributes appear in the attribute editor. Now let's drag a connection from the output of the oscillator and connect it to our shape's rotation value. And look at that, our shape is dancing with zero keyframes, now we can change these oscillator values to whatever we want. It's important to note that connections in Cavalry are not exactly the same as pick whipping in After Effects. Oftentimes, pick whipping in After Effects creates a parent-child relationship, but connections in Cavalry are always connecting the actual value of something to something else. But don't get stuck only thinking about rotation. Oscillators can connect to anything. Let's try the width attribute. Look at that, rotation and squash all at the same time. And you know what, I love this shape so much, I think we should. Up here in the corner, we have some more tools. When just getting started, ignore all of them except for the duplicator. Click on the duplicator button, right click and group our shape. Check out my more in-depth duplicator sequence video that explains why we put this into a group. Drag our group into the input shapes attribute. And look, we got more of the shape we love doing its thing. On the duplicator, you can change the attributes for all kinds of stuff. This changes the size of the distribution and this changes the amount. And here you can try out different distribution types. Now let's get some overlapping motion. Double click on our oscillator to bring up its attributes. Down at the bottom is a stagger, which will offset the phase of the oscillator per duplicated index. Now that's pretty interesting, but if you want better control, we have to go a level deeper. Right click on the stagger and add a stagger to that stagger. If we set the stagger max to two, we see that we have the same animation as before, but here we can also add a minimum, but most importantly, this one has a graph. This lets you adjust how the values are distributed across the indices. The first basic thing that we can do is just flip our graph so that it affects our shapes in reverse order. Just doing this makes the offset motion feel a lot better. Make sure to play around with all the attributes and settings when learning a new behavior. Procedural colors and text. Why have one color when you can have more than one color? Add some colors to a color array. Connect that color array to the original shape's color attribute, and boom, you've got all sorts of colors going on. Need dynamic titles? String arrays got your back. And did I mention that all of this is in the free version? Because all of these features and more are available for free with the starter license. Now go and get a free license and start making cool stuff.